Hey, hey guys, welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome to the very first advanced tutorial series. Now today we're going to be taking a look at Mac. McDonald's? No. Big Mac? No. MEC, also known as Manual Engine Controls. Okay, so before I really jump into this one, I wanted to get one thing nice and clear, and that is that manual engine controls are not something that's going to make you a better pilot. It is simply something that those of you who are already very good at the game and want to improve your aircraft's performance by a few extra kilometers to get a few extra bits of horsepower out of the engine, this is the perfect thing for you. But before I dive into the actual features of manual engine control, every single thing that it covers, we have to first activate them, or at least set them up. And for a lot of people this is a difficult thing to do because they simply cannot find the manual engine controls in the controls menu. Because they're not located under the mouse aim tab, but under the full real tab. Don't worry, you don't have to be using full real controls. You, all you have to do is go into the actual settings of the full real controls, set up your manual engine controls, and then go back to mouse aim and it will still be working nice and fine. Now to make things a lot easier for you, I have linked you to a forum thread where you will find this video along with some basic instructions, so if you want some more in-depth look at the actual features which I'll be going in in a second, uh, you can find them there described in much better detail, but as well you're going to be finding an attachment and that attachment is my control setup. All you have to do is download it and put it into your default Wall Thunder folder. Now, before you open up the file, I would highly advise that you first save your existing control setup, because it's going to be erased if you don't do that. When you open up my file, you will realize that my key bindings are most likely going to be different from the ones that you use. So what I would recommend you do is just go into some test flights, play around with it, and then try to put your existing setup, your existing key bindings, and kind of mix them up with my setup. I think you'll find the results to be quite lovely. Okay, but without any further ado, let's jump into the actual menu engine controls, take a look at its features, and set it up in the best possible way. Okay, so if you have opened up my controls, you will have noticed that I've assigned all of the actual engine controls to a specific part of your keyboard. It's a part of the keyboard that it's often not used, not just in War Thunder, but in any of the games, and that is the keypad. Now, if you're using a small laptop or a smaller, uh, smaller keyboard, uh, you might not have this. Um, in that case, you might have to bind the keys to something else, um, but I assume that the majority of you have the keypad on the actual keyboard, and so this is going to be very, very nice. Um, what I've done is I've taken every single engine control and placed it directly onto the keypad, and so you can control all of the engine features directly from the keypad. To give you a bit of an overview, um, zero is going to be your main engine switch from manual to auto. Um, delete or dot is going to be your engine on and off switch. I've switched that between I. Um, numbers one, two, and three are going to be your radiator controls. Four, five, and six are going to be your mix controls, the uh, mixture of the fuel. Numbers seven, eight, and nine are going to control your prop pitch. Um, divide, multiply, minus and plus are going to be your turbocharger control, so then a bit of an L shape. And then there's enter, which is going to be your supercharger gear. With those things mentioned, it's now time that we dive into each and every one of these features and take a look at how I've actually set this thing up and uh, how you're going to be using it in battle. Okay, so here we are in a test flight with a P-51 Mustang and the first thing that we're taking a look at is the radiator control. Now, in a combat situation where you're dogfighting with an enemy aircraft, what you usually do is you're using wartime emergency power because you want your aircraft to be a little bit faster, to be a little bit more on the edge and to get a few extra horsepower from the engine. Now, all that is great, but what it's creating is it's creating excess heat. And as the engine overheats, as it reaches orange and red temperatures, it's going to start to uh, time out. So the radiator from the automatic engine control is going to start opening, you know, the more hot the engine goes, the more it's going to try to cool it down. But at the same time, you're still wepping. So you're in a bit of a kind of a circle of life here where, you know, the more you're wepping, the more the radiator is going to open. And so you're trying to wep the aircraft to go faster, yet at the same time, the engine is creating excess drag. So in order to fix that, we have a very easy way of doing that, and that is to access the manual engine controls. So we're going to start off by pressing zero, 
uh, followed by one. One is going to activate or in this case disable the automatic control because if the aircraft has an automatic control of the radiator it's going to be activated. Press one to disactivate that. And now simply by using numbers two to close it and three to open it, we have full manual control of the radiator. So if the engine is hot, we want to open it all the way or if we want to get uh, the minimum amount of drag, you can just close it to increase aerodynamics. Now the following feature is called Mixture and it's one that I tend not to use too much. There's a slight reason behind that and that is that um, it's not just different for every aircraft, it's different for every altitude that an aircraft has. So if you really wanted to use it effectively you would have to go into some test flights, go into a climb and try different types of percentages of the fuel mixture at lower altitudes and then at higher altitudes for example exceeding five or six thousand meters. Um, one of the things you can also do with the fuel mixture is that if you decrease it too much um, the engine is going to die out. But fear not, if you press 4 on the keypad you're going to reset the mixture to the default setting and then you can turn your engine back on. But again if you do this at the wrong moment um, you could get yourself killed very easily in the heat of the battle. The third one and probably one of the most complicated ones is the prop pitch. Now, it does exactly what it says on the tin, that is, it changes the pitch of the propeller. Uh, but at the same time, it consequently changes the RPM of the engine. So, the thing about prop pitch is that usually the method used is to use 100% when climbing, um, use 90% when traveling at very high speeds, and use 0% in the case that your engine dies and you're trying to get back to base. That's something that's called uh, prop feathering. It's going to create the least amount of drag and uh, give you a few extra um, hundred or maybe a kilometer to help you get to the runway. Um, now to access the prop pitch it's very simple, you want to press 7 to disable automatic prop pitch and then you can just simply change this by pressing 8 and 9. Now on aircraft that do not have automatic prop pitch, the prop pitch will automatically set to 50% as soon as you've actually activated manual engine controls. So you're effectively using 50% of your RPM, if we can put it that into numbers. Um, my recommendation is that on those aircraft, try playing around and putting the actual throttle to 100%. Aircraft that do in fact have automatic prop pitch, I would unadvise playing around with the prop pitch on your own. Um, on certain aircraft, such as the Focke-Wulf 90s, playing around with the prop pitch, accelerating it to anything over 75, will in fact instantly kill your engine. The engine is going to over rev, it's going to die and there's no way to redo that. So again, if you're going to be flying out an aircraft that doesn't have automatic control of the prop pitch, go into test flight and do some testing before you actually go into a match because the last thing you want is losing your engine immediately after taking off. Now one of the features you can play around with without any kind of risk of killing your engine is in fact the supercharger. It is ridiculously simple to use. Uh, by pressing the enter key you simply change the supercharger gear from 1 to 2 and the way it works is very simple. Um, for altitudes below 5000 meters approximately you should be using gear 1 and for altitudes above that you should be using gear 2. Uh, but if you're not aware where those uh, altitudes differences are for a particular aircraft you can always just put the aircraft into a climb uh, change the supercharger gear and look at speed. If it starts increasing, you're in the right gear. If it starts decreasing, you're in the wrong gear. The following one is a bit of a different story. The turbocharger is only modeled on a handful of aircraft in the game because only a handful of aircraft actually had turbochargers. And where it is actually modded, I still do not know how to use this thing. Uh, doing a lot of research, I've not been able to find anybody uh, who was able to make this thing work. And uh, as soon as you change any kind of percentage with the supercharger, it's going to immediately damage the engine and you're going to be losing a huge amount of power. So I think it's the least to say to keep this thing on auto at all times. Alright, so to wrap it all up, I think the easiest way to put it is that with exception of the radiator control and the supercharger, everything else should be tested before being used in an actual battle to minimize the risk of the engine actually stopping. Um, I have to keep this video short because it is a YouTube video, but um, in the forum thread that I've linked you up, there will be a ton of information. I'll be including a lot more detailed description of how everything's taking part. And uh, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to put them in the comments below or on the forum itself. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about the manual engine controls. And if there is a tutorial on anything in the game that you want me to do, feel free to request that below. But until next time, take care and uh, safe flying. Bye.
I look down and oh, what a pleasant surprise. Well, blue smoke, thanks for mapping yourself. So, first time it's up, it's a, uh, well, it's a new. <laughs> now, um, he's fully okay, he's completely unaware of his situation, and uh, he has definitely had some joining progress uh, turned on here, so 